Brad Neil Atkinson, Mike Nevin, Andy Heaton and John Gibbons uh, chewing the fat about Burnley versus Liverpool. In many senses, it might be a tough hour. I mean, Mike Nevin, you walked up before and you just sort of said, it's good that we've got a game on Tuesday. It's good to be able to get these sorts of things out of your system. I think the issue and why we're going to do the show a little differently to normal is, is not to have a full... Inquest, if you know what I mean, and act as though the, 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 the sky's falling in. But it's sort of the uh, the repetition of the patterns that you've seen at times, the shortcomings you've seen from Liverpool last season under Klopp, possibly last season under Rodgers, possibly the season before under Rodgers in terms of what Liverpool are doing in away games where sides are putting 10, 10 men behind the ball. Yeah, um, and it, uh, for me as well, the, 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 the worry, and you know, because the performance was worrying, um, is that... I don't think you'd face that exclusively away from home uh, against, should we say, the bottom half. Uh, you know, lots of teams are going to come to Anfield and play in a, in a similar vein with uh, practically an entire team behind the ball. So, I suppose Klopp's preferred style of play, you know, the counter pressing, breaking quickly that we saw fantastically at Arsenal, is something that we might not that easily facilitate through more than a third of the league fixtures. So. You know, talk. I, I talk of talk of Plan Bs and stuff. But if there is to be an alternative way of breaking teams down, then it's going to apply to two thirds of the games this season. So it's absolutely critical that Liverpool improve on what they put uh, the, the show that they put on on on, um, on Saturday. And one of one of the things, I mean, maybe just to embellish the point about the home games, is that and I, I tweeted about this yes, yesterday was that of all the games that it reminded me of, me of in recent times was it was Carlisle at home. Where we had all the ball, we had about 46 shots across uh, 90 minutes in extra time, but never really looked like scoring. And there was a consistent theme of Coutinho cutting in and blaming shots wide. And that was a worry. And obviously, that was under Rodgers. Um, and, we, you know, we, we're basically a year down the tracks. And I think everyone was obviously very enthusiastic about this season. Klopp would drill things in during pre season. I think that was something that was trotted out a lot during last year when people were, you know, sort of defended him quite rightly in his first season. Mm-hmm. But, um, and, I, and I think it's all too easy to accept, it, to think that that's suddenly going to go away. Um, but perhaps we didn't expect it quite so soon to be reminded of last season's failings. Andy, there's a, there's, there's a wider point uh, that Mike's just touched on there, which is that you play against arguably... 10, maybe even 12 sides who'll come to Anfield and stick them in behind the ball. And then of those 12 sides, probably eight of them will try and do the same at home. For instance, I don't think Burnley's approach changes drastically after they go 1-0 up. I don't think they're thinking, oh, now we now we shift gears, now we go into our the next phase of our plan. I think that the way in which certainly they approached the whole of the first half is the way they broadly would have approached it no matter what happens. That is the, that's the overarching worry here. Despite Liverpool, you know, we're going to go on to talk about how ridiculously flat Liverpool were regardless and even in the context of that. But that is the worry, isn't it? You play more games Games like this than you play of any other type. Yeah, but well, Burnley mightn't have changed from changed tack from one nil. Um, I think mentally it affects Liverpool massively. Um, I think if you're coming into games effectively one nil down, yeah, and I know we've we've come back before, but it it didn't half knock the wind out of our sails. Literally two minutes in, and it and if the fans are thinking it, you can guarantee the players are thinking it. Thinking off, you know, not again. In, you know, the, the silly thing is, we're more likely to have more chance of a comeback against the bigger side as we did last year with Chelsea, as we did against Arsenal the other week. Because I, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It seems to be like a mental cage that they get themselves into, get, get into, into this mental funk. And I wasn't confident after one 0 down, uh, even with, even with all the possession, because it just felt like Groundhog Day. And then, as Mike said, he was spot on. My overriding thing was watching Coutinho take a touch in and blam it over the bar again. I'd love to say it was a false result because effectively your, your entire week goes out the window within two minutes. I know you've got to be prepared to be one 0 down, one thing or the other, but the nature of the goal more than the actual goal. Put it this way: if Burnley score a really good goal, you go, all right, fair enough. You know, we go again on that. But when you Consistently shooting yourself in the foot, it must massively affect them. <laughs> Either of Yeah, um, I'm just in your general direction. It's, it, was, it was it was just a really frustrating day because all the way through that first half until two 0 you're just thinking Liverpool just need to be need to you you always say do two or three things well or have a good have a good you know ten twenty seconds and barely or struggle because they didn't look great and you thought you know if we get one in you could get three or four and and they couldn't win it but they just couldn't ever get that period together even 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 10 20 30 seconds where where they looked like a good team you know it seemed above them you know 
stringing three passes together in a row or meaningful passes really seem I mean the amount of balls that were just hit into touch um that easily was 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 really kind of worrying really and just they didn't seem to have faith in each other how, how they were set up and kind of what they were doing and it was just frustrating to see a team who, who you know who we've spoken about a lot you know getting them get getting themselves ready over the summer about how being ready and how they're going to be moving the ball quickly and how they're going to be fitter just seeing a team so quickly kind of unravel into a lack of confidence into a lack of ideas and a lack of belief in each other I think as much as anything as well is 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 is, is really frustrating and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a worry because, as everyone said, there's going to be a lot of games like this this season. You know, it, there's almost a blueprint how to play against Liverpool now. Pressure them on the ball, you know, be tight, be compact if they, if they do manage to get it over the halfway line. And, you know, and you will make chances against them. I mean, Burnley won't finish again like that this season, you know, let's be honest. But, you know, you, you don't want to say necessarily you've been unlucky either because we give them chances. We give them good opportunities and clear sights of goal. Just, just completely unnecessarily. Yeah, and I think the other thing as well is that if you look across the two games, you talk about the blueprint that was sort of established for other teams to set up in a certain way against us off the back of Saturday, but equally at Arsenal as well, and the way that we were able to play on the counter. So at all costs, opposition uh, are going to try and avoid that scenario if if they can. I think, and what really, I suppose, frustrated about the performance, it was every single aspect, um, because... Obviously, if you've got 81% possession and you can't create chances, then that's a real worry. But equally, because we had 81% possession, we we spent very little time defending. And yet we managed to concede two absolute comedy caper goals, in my my opinion. And I'm 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 going to slate Clavan because I think his part in both goals was, was really poor. Because the first, the first goal, Klein's put under, under pressure yeah. by that, that crossfield ball, which is completely unnecessary. And from what, I've, from what I've read about Klopp at Dortmund and what I've seen previously when he was managing Dortmund, his centre-halves were always um, quite keen to go long and early. Mm. Um, and Clavan could have done that on that occasion, but he, he spread it across the back, puts Klein under pressure. Mm. And his part in the second goal, I think he makes about four mistakes in the space of about five seconds there, because... When um, Gray's initially offside, he's about ten yards offside. Clavan sort of goes, then comes, then retreats. Then he sees um, Defoe miss control, goes into it to, to a challenge because he thinks he can win it. But it's such a powder puff challenge, and then he's slow getting back for me as well, and then puts another lame uh, attempt in at uh, dispossession. Uh, Gray just as he's about to, to shoot, and I, th- I just thought, you know, perhaps there's an indication there that um, you know if you are going to invest in you know cheap players. Um, at the the back end of the careers, then you know he had a decent start at Arsenal, but that could be that could be his level. That one week he's good, the next week you're going to see a catalogue of errors that ultimately lost Liverpool the game. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things in that. There's there's obviously the the, the individual quality of, of the player and a few players, which is a worry. But on the on this policy to to, to play it out from the back and, and uh, seemingly at all costs, I don't know where it's come from. Mm-hmm. I don't I mean because that, that that's not anything that the club seems to have talked about at all and. Quite why? Why would they? But it does it? look like a policy, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. That's what I mean. So I don't think I don't mean Clavin's just decided. Oh, I'm just going to start spraying these balls about, and it is a bad pass. But just put your foot through it. You know, there's there's, there's a minute on the clock, and you know with the situation. But it just seems to be this this thing where we've decided that we're going to play it from the back no matter what. And and I don't I don't know where why we've suddenly decided that. And I don't think we've necessarily got the players to do it. You know, you've got two centre halves there who who aren't really you know, they're all right on the ball, but they're not great. And you've got a defensive midfielder who, who I don't think he really knows what he's doing there in terms of that. And I don't think I don't think he's great under pressure either. I think I think throughout his Liverpool career I think his his kind of technique's been found wanting when when he's been pressured on the ball. And so so when you set up like that and then we, with those sorts of players, I don't, I don't understand where this thing's come from. This kind of, you know, Brendan Rodgers, oh, we're going to play it from everywhere and, and that's how we're going to play it. It just seems unnecessary to me. You know, just, just get in the game, first of all. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, maybe maybe if, as, the, as the game wears down and, and, the, and they're not kind of pressing you as hard or, or just, just cause when, when you've had a few touches and you're a bit more confident, then maybe maybe start that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm not against keeping the ball, but it just seems to be, it seems at the moment... It's about that, keeping the ball in the right areas, areas yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You know? I may as well <laughs> Go on. That's all right. <laughs> Did I have a nice just, chat? Just, just everything John was saying. <laughs> <laughs> just, just that. No, it, it looked like a deliberate thing. Maybe it, it, the idea was try and draw Burnley out. I agree with John. We done it a little bit too early. And we got caught early without a real feel for the ball. Um, but no, I, I, where do you disagree? Is I, I thought that was a thing that he liked to draw them on. Um, I think. And oh look, Andy's going to bash the goalkeeper. 
I don't like you. You can see when the there's a lot more ball into feet Mingale in the first two games of the season than there was towards the tail end of last season when you could see he was told to get long. The amount of balls now where he'll take it, put the ball through to Henderson, who he drops deep, or the fullback maybe trying to draw Burnley out. Be interesting to see what happens when the when the when the new goalkeeper's fit and Matip's in there and whether. Yeah, no, it, it just it just felt like they were trying to draw them out with them early, uh, and they, and they've they paid for it. The, the, the draw them out part's interesting because I want to talk about the first twenty. I don't. One of the things that grabs me is one of the things I want to move on to is that you know I think we were all saying start fast, let's start fast, let's start let's start to start fast, and yet if there is again a pattern that's emerged, and I think it's emerged more, Mike. With Klopp as Liverpool manager, than arguably with Rodgers, uh, because you feel as though Rodgers always wanted to start fast, but sometimes it just didn't happen. Uh, Klopp, you feel as though there is this this idea that we can, you know, Andy just said it there. Let's draw them out a bit. Let's see if we can create a little bit and then do it. Whereas you're saying before, you know, there's nothing wrong with going long every now and again. There's nothing wrong mm. with going long early in games because it makes it forces them back, but it also makes them think twice. Whereas. We didn't really pick a side that could go along, and I wonder if this is part of the decision-making process in terms of knocking around more boys. Because there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lad on there who you, certainly playing through the middle of the pitch who you felt could turn them round, uh, could could stress them out in the air or anything like that. Yeah. So no one's lightning, are they? No one's lightning. And that's the, no one's lightning. No one's big. No one's doing any of that. So that that option sort of taken away from them, and instead, so the solution becomes almost well, this has got to be the solution. But for me, my worry is two things. One. You're setting up in a manner which says we've got to we've got to have a number of these lads play their eight out of ten game, and number two, you're setting up in a manner which 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 doesn't allow you to go right. Okay, blister in first ten. Let's see what these are about. When the crowd is going to be urging them on a little bit and all that sort of stuff before they can actually institute the idea of mm. right, we just sit in here. Whether it's nil nil or one nil, whether or not they can just go right, we just sit in here now and get half time. Mm. And that's what what's what's troubling me watching watching that that regardless even of the goal almost in a sense watching that first half. Yeah, and you know, the, I suppose the selection as well. It, it does, I mean, it, obviously we lost Mane, so there's there's nothing you can do about that. But you can go a little bit more like for like. And I think by, by bringing in Sturridge, and Sturridge is nowhere near. He's nowhere near for me the player that he was prior to all of his injuries. And I was on a show over the summer where I was sort of saying to Phil Blundell, Phil was uh, slightly taking issue with the idea that he was playing much deeper than he did as previously. I, I think Saturday was just an, it's an yeah. example. And also, when he plays him in that right-hand sided position in the front three, I think it gives him more scope to drop deep. Whereas if you play more centrally, I think he, I think that happens less. And he's... I've just got this mental image uh, on my brain of Saturday of of storage uh, sort of just on the halfway line on the right hand side, and I'm thinking, well, that's fine as long as you if you if you're going to get involved in the play and you're going to lay it off, and but I want to see you then legging it into the box so that you're available to score. And I said to you, Neil, at the game, yeah. I can't see I can't see where Storage gets his goal here. And you know, if Sturridge is going to be playing for me. You know, it's, it's his finishing inside the box as much as goals like in the Europa final that set him apart because he has been previously the arch poacher. But whatever he was on Saturday, he, he certainly wasn't uh, in contention for a scuffed finish, a near post header, um, arriving late at the far post. He just wasn't in those positions. Do you think that's him, or do you think that's what the manager's asking him to do? Because it's he's definitely playing what with the us. manager's asking him to do. He's de- it's definitely what the manager's asking him to do. He's not doing that. Because he knows what his strengths are, he knows that his strengths in the box. Um, he'll point to his goal scoring record when he's played up front. Um, and I mean, you go back, you look back in history. Part of the reason why he left Chelsea is because he was getting dumped on the right hand side because he could do the, the famous do a job. Um, I was a little bit frustrated um, that you did. That I was made up. He was in the lineup, and then when they lined up, and you saw. He was shifted to the right to accommodate Firmino through the middle, who's actually probably more suited to play a little bit deeper than Sturridge is. And then later on in the game, when Origi comes on, Firmino then drops back, and Origi's then put in the position that maybe Sturridge. Yeah. I mean, we were talking on the Friday show. You know, we, we expected Burnley to play. We never really saw it because we conceded too early. But we, had the game progressed as nil nil, fifty minutes, and you expected Burnley to drop a little bit deep. That's the perfect time to have a Daniel Sturridge in the box. When there's a, there's a crowd of players around who can make that little angle, who can get that little bit of a, a shot in, and then as the game goes on, I, I still think he's searching for fitness. I don't think he's as fast as he is, but those are two things that you don't particularly need in the box as long as you're sharp. But if you've been busting a guff for 50 minutes on the right hand side, you get frustrated, and he, he, he's a player who clearly does get frustrated, and that that affects his overall game. It's it, it basically he's been told to do that basically. It's. I mean, no matter. I mean, the, the wide right thing is kind of a separate thing for, for storage. Really, that's. I don't get that at all. But but ever since kind of Klopp's 
seemingly come in. He, he's, he's even if he's been up front on his own, he's becoming he's been playing deeper or coming deeper. I don't know what the manager's telling him, but but it's but it's a, it's a, it's a strange one to, to to see to see him used in that way or, or using himself in that way. I don't get it. You know, you know, the Burnley manager was asking after the game. You know about possession. You said, "Well, you know, I could we could have possession if we had six men in midfield." And you know, it's 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 true. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of dig from the opposite manager, but you know, you can see where he's come from because you know, if if you've got everyone that even everyone just coming looking for the ball, then then it, then it's easy. And I don't know. I, I I didn't get it at all. Really, I think I think Sturridge is a, is a little bit too keen to come for the ball at the moment. I'd rather he touched less, and it was in more 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 kind of dangerous areas. But but is that is that because the manager said to me he, want, he wants more from him? He wants him to involve more. I don't I don't know. It's but it was it was another thing that was frustrating on Saturday in a, in a kind of you know when you had twenty or thirty. <laughs> Things that were kind of frustrating. Yeah. And, and the thing about I don't think it's really up for debate about where Sturridge has got his greatest qualities. I mean, you think about the Villarreal goal um, at Anfield last season, in a tight space, gets a shot away, scores. Everton at home in the league, mm. again, one touch into the corner. He's brilliant at all of that. Um, but I think equally, I mean, Andy alluded to it, for me, you know, at Arsenal, I noticed, and previously as well, he's quite effective coming in from the wide areas. He's good, he gets his head up, he plays short, quick balls into, yeah. into feet. He's very inventive. And I, th- I don't think I don't think Firmino is as as uh, creative yeah. and has the same vision when he's played centrally. So I think you take you, effectively the way that we, we lined up up front negated the best of storage and um, and uh, uh, Firmino for me, for me as well. Um, yeah. And what compounding all of that was was Coutinho seemed to have the wrong boots on because he was over hitting everything. Well, he was over hitting his shots, his passes, his crosses, and twice yeah. it went into touch. There's not more debilitating for a team. I think when you just when you roll the ball out of touch, yeah. and he did it twice in the space of about ten yeah. minutes in the, in the first twenty minutes. Yeah, and it re- I think that, that sucked the life as much life out of us as the early goal. But what I'd say is about from three as well. Sorry, Neil. What I'd say about from three is that when you'll often see them drop deeper and deeper is when they haven't got faith in in the platform mm. that's being built. And you saw that with say Steven Gerrard when he was when he was being asked to play number ten. If he if he didn't fancy the midfield, you just see him get deeper and deeper. Whereas when he had you know Alonso there giving the ball, he kind of stay up. And, and you wonder a little bit about that about the, the the front three as they were. Are they coming deeper and deeper because they're looking at you know the midfield behind them and saying these guys aren't, aren't giving us a good enough platform to kind of go out and attack? I, I kind of wonder on that. But that that's no reason for Coutinho to keep kicking it out of touch. That's, that's no sorry to cut across yeah. there, but I mean that, that's no real surprise to me because the the, the lineup in the in the, of the three in the middle as well is of Wijnaldum who looks to me a nice footballer but more of a runner, yeah. um, and then you've got Henderson. I don't think Henderson is not. I mean, he does a lot of good work he, at Arsenal. He recycled the ball really well in the second half, but he's a recycler yeah. rather than an inventive passer. Occasionally, occasionally he hits a nice one long, but in shorter, in tighter spaces, I don't think he's got great vision, Jordan Henderson. So the midfield, therefore, I mean, that would explain why forwards want to come deep because they don't think that they've got a supply line from behind. On <clears throat> just on Coutinho, it's one where it's a question for you, really. When he when he when he's in that funk where he's stepping in and blaming it, he telegraphs it as well. He'll pick it up on the left-hand side, and you'll know what he's going to do. He's going to take two touches with his right, and try and shape it into the far into the far corner. Now, I don't mean to I don't mean to knock him because I think he's probably our best player, and I think he's coming on leaps and bounds every season. But I just think he massively struggles when he tries to win the game on his own. But then at the same time, when he tries to win the game on his own, like he did at Old Trafford last year, sometimes it comes off. So what? What version, of Coutinho, this is, what version of Coutinho would you want? This is my frustration in general, Mike. I think that this happened. I, I think by about... Coutinho had his first cutting in, blowing it over on 17. And for me, Sturridge was throwing his hands up in frustration by about 25. And for me, that entire team... As broadly speaking, become dysfunctional by twenty five minutes. That that yeah. and that this is where and I've got a lot of sympathy for what John's saying in terms of you going and looking for the ball. But sometimes someone's just got to say, you know what, I'm just going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to do what was literally my job, and I'm just going to stick with that. And there, that's where I feel a little sorry for 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 Lallana. I thought started brightest in the first twenty five minutes was that suddenly he was looking up and everyone's trying to do everything. Mm. And that to me is again. It's lapsing back into all behaviours, and that's hugely concerning. I think. I think that's the idea that they've all got up about twenty five minutes. Your best player, who I think, is Sturridge, or certainly your most likely goal scorer is Sturridge. He's looking at them, thinking, "I don't fancy this." Firmino's flitting round, trying to get on it and trying to influence it. Coutinho started to have his shots. Now, when Henderson's looking up, if he does want to play a forward pass, and I don't think he was given the license to play enough of them, but if he does want to try and play an aggressive forward pass to turn it round, well, lads are just all around him. Mm. No one's no one. They're all around him, and they're all in the middle of the pitch. No. 
one's pull. Even these lads who are put, they're dropping deep. They're not pulling wide. As I think what I'm driving at, they're not even trying to you know create little three on twos in wide areas and stretch Burnley. They're all just sort of going. No, I've got to, I've got to sort this. I've got to sort yeah. this. Yeah. And it was killing me watching watching it to be honest with you. Because well, lads, there's ages left here, but heads are absolutely gone, and that's that's terrifying when it's the second game of the season. The momentum we've been working on playing in our gut and all this sort of stuff. Well, uh, totally. I mean, and it did manif- it manifested itself in so many ways. They took away from the better performers, and you know, I know, I know nobody really played well. But Lallana, as you say, started brightly, had a few nice turns to create a little bit of space. But then, as Coutinho began to sort of take take it upon himself to try and win the game on his own, he became less effective. Henderson just seemed to, to me throughout the game to be play, playing very conservative passes. There was one pass second half attempted where it was a really nice through ball and it was, it was cut out by a sort of a lunge in Burnley. But it was a lunge, seven. they stretched. But, but it, got them, it got them stretching. And Henderson's better when he, when he is more progressive with yeah. his passing. Um, but in the sort of the turgid nature of our performance, I think he completely lost that. And I think I think his own personal frustration showed in the second half, where again he gave a short um, a short ball to I can't remember who it was, but he gave the ball away and then committed the foul that saw him booked as well. And I thought that was an indication of how frustrated he was within his own performance as well as within with the, the team as a whole and. By that stage, we'd gone. We, did he look we to, we'd to totally you, gone. Did he look injured to you? He looked a yard off again for me, Anderson. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah I th- I, I, me, I'm just no, a bit, a bit, conf- a bit confused so. because I thought at Arsenal second half, I thought he was excellent and I was, I was really encouraged to think we were getting the player back that we saw two seasons ago. But I've, I've slightly revised my opinion. I haven't watched him for, for 90 on, on Saturday. But I mean, one thing that has to be said, though, I mean, on another day, you know, we're all being critical of the, of the, the players and the performances as, as a whole here. But we did have 26 shots. We did have 81% possession. Um, OK, we didn't create an awful lot with it. But on another day, break of the ball, you know, even at 1-0, you get one break in the box. And we did have, I think, Lallana or Coutinho had one chance. If you score there, it's possible, we're possibly having a completely different conversation. Mm. Um, and I think circumstances, to a degree, did conspire against Liverpool throughout the game. Second goal came at a terrible time. Um, and I think, ultimately, we've just got to move on. The, the positive thing for me is that it's happened that early, this early in the season. And I, th- I think, just generally, as, as a club, we need to be more humble about playing in, in supposedly inferior opposition. Even as fans, we've got this mentality now where we say, just beat the bot- bottom half home and away and that gets you 60 points. Well, the bottom half of the Premier League is a lot stronger now than it was two seasons ago because play- because other, sc- other clubs are spending money. It's a lot stronger than it was 10 seasons ago. Well, without a doubt. You know, as, as a, I mean, maybe not so strong at the top. I mean, maybe this season it will be with the investments at the top clubs. But the Premier League as a whole bar one or two teams is incredibly strong across the board because of the investment that all clubs are making the only club that isn't really seriously investing is Liverpool really if you're, talk, if you're talking about next spend after Ben Teke's departure yeah it'd be interesting to see if they do now Klopp kind of suggests otherwise although I'm sure they've kind of got half their eye on a couple of players and, and, and had done before it they just they just kind of look to me like they do we're missing a couple of players and, and they're missing a couple of players that that um that, that we kind of thought they might do, and I'm, I'm, I'm still really, you know, you talk about the left back thing, and you say about the left back, and, and I don't think the Milner thing worked. No. Um, I thought, I thought he really, I was, I was up for giving it a go. I'm not, I'm not kind of, you know, this is, this is kind of hindsight if you like. I was up for kind of giving the Milner thing a go, and maybe the early goal, maybe it actually hurts him more than anyone because, because, because then they would, we, we were really relying on kind of, you know, getting forward and things like that, and but. It just seemed to hurt us in terms of he was very much playing left back, uh, and it just seemed to hurt us in terms of an, a natural someone with natural wit or someone with an attacking man- mentality like him. And you know, we'll get forward and give you an out ball. And I thought a few times, you know, when they were struggling to get out, they were looking up on the left, and, and Milner was Milner was actually too deep. And it's funny kind of saying that now because we've been talking about Moreno and his position and things like that, but we weren't getting that natural whiff up the, up the left hand side and we, there wasn't an out ball there mm. to, to be fair to Moreno he often is and, and Klein gives you that as well and, 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 and Milner just was was maybe you know and maybe maybe that's something they, they, they can talk to him about and things like that but he just he just looked like to me he got out with the thing you know, you know well they're after a the steady idea yeah, you know they've, they've got this guy Moreno and he's a bit mad and he's and he's, he's making rash decisions so I'll just kind of hang back and just be a bit of a left back and so there was there was the issues I mean there's the obvious issues 
final third that when we were able to get him onto the ball, you know, he always wants to cut inside. And that was an issue as well because because the fullback just knows what he's going to do. He's going to come in on his right and he's going to play. And there was a couple of times where, you know, they, they tried to play him in and he just didn't have the legs. And that was that was a couple of the ones where I felt a, bit, a little bit sorry for the for the other players when, you know, it looks like they've got a bad pass where they've just, they've just, they've just, Used to, to to Moreno being there and, and Milner just didn't quite have the legs for it. I mean, you know, you need to adjust. But but I actually thought it was in our own half where going forward he kind of restricted us more really because you know with a, with a compact midfield if you're your fullback, your attacking fullback can can, can be you know he couldn't move us thirty yards off the pitch. Yeah, exactly. He couldn't at all. And so so that kind of experiment, as I say, I understand why they did it. And I wasn't a kind of a against it because he he done all right there in pre season. And I understand the, the desire to get Milner on the pitch. Be, you know when when there's a real lack of leadership elsewhere, although that's another story. I, I just think it doesn't work, and I think now they've got to say, okay, well we either we either try Moreno and just and just go with him, or we've got to get into the market. And I think I think that decision needs to be fairly clear now, really. And the central midfield thing as well. It, you know, there's there's a real lack of leadership in there. There's a real lack of people who want to get on the ball and run it. They all kind of look into each other, really. You know, Henderson's had a decent Liverpool career, I would always argue, but it's always with a very specific role. Um, you know, when Alden's looking to me like he's not necessarily a central midfielder, and Lallana's trying to learn it. You know, Lallana's talking now saying. I need to learn my position and that's fine if you've got two really good lads next to you but, but who's he learning it off he's learning as he goes really isn't he and, and, I, and I'm okay with this with this experiment of, of, of dropping Lallana a little bit deeper I, I think it's it's worth a go and I think he's a good footballer and I think he'll do well there but but yeah, it'd be a lot easier for him if he had someone, he had someone running, it, you know, behind him, and he had someone next to him. You know, it looks like Wijnaldum's learning it a little bit to me as well. So you've got this kind of real makeshift midfield at the moment of, of people who, who kind of aren't really sure of the roles, or maybe mm. are, but but aren't suited to the ones they're being asked to play. And those two areas are really, really concerning to me. So I take I take on Mike's Mike's. What, what Mike said about you know being you know a, a good time you know for this result and about being a bit more humble and things like that but you know that that's good needs to be throughout the football club and it needs to be okay well these, these are two things that we could really do with and I'm not saying panic buyers and I'm not saying go out and just get anyone but presumably they've got a big database there of midfielders and left backs who you'd like to like who'd like to get in and maybe it's just it just kind of proves that that's the time to maybe spend a little bit more on on what we need otherwise you know it could be kind of another season where we're not doing what we want to I felt a little bit sorry for Milner um, I think Moreno dropped I think it's not just Moreno not being there I think it's exacerbated I think I mentioned this by Mane not being there because yeah. there's very little and Klein also having a poor game it sounds mad that a right back's game could affect a left back but as you say but there's, there's no one really you can hit especially when you're 1-0 down there's no you can't really hit the channels and I, I, and Dyche mentions the six man midfield that's because no one was willing to... We, we keep talking about breaking the lines, breaking the lines, breaking the lines. If you've got six men in, in midfield, surely it's one of those, or at least at least one of their, their responsibilities, maybe two, to to get that. And I think with Henderson as well, I'm, I'm a fan of Henderson, and I just, Mike referenced it before. I'm still I'm surprised Chan didn't start in Henderson's position, and Henderson didn't... He said Chan had a back problem, didn't he? Oh, fair he? enough, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's um, what Hagen said, yeah. But I think Henderson's best position for Liverpool is... is not as an attacking midfield, but a midfielder in the sense of with license to move forward. I think his instinct um, normally is to try and play a forward pass, and and he's willing to to create that movement with his and his athleticism's there as well. And I think you just lose that a little bit if if he's playing a little bit deeper. I didn't know about Chan being injured so far, and that probably answers the question. No, I think it's an interesting one to be honest with you because Mike, I think where we end up here is that you can argue that you've got. You could, you, you, I mean, you can you can really get stuck in and maybe say that people are being asked to do what they're not sure about doing. But you can certainly argue that it quickly became a game where you felt Milner's just out of position. The way in which the game broke meant that Henderson was doing quite a an unusual job for him. It wasn't quite the job that you you described mm-hmm. him doing at Arsenal. You can argue Lallana, Vinealdum are both learning the positions that they're playing. We're not so sure about storage off the right, and this mm-hmm. is you know this is. The only way, I mean, I, you know, I've got sympathy for the manager here. If he's sitting here, he'd, he'd probably say, well, the only way they learn is by playing. I need to get them sort of doing this sort of stuff. If I want, that's what I want from them. If I want their attributes, they're going to have to learn to do it at some point. But it is this idea that, you know, it would have been... And I think my issue my issue in general, I'm trying to the right way to articulate this, and it's something I'm going to go in more, in, into more detail, I think, on the Tuesday review with Sean later. But, and Ian, uh, is that I think that there's too much... Um, there's too much that everyone's got to play 8 out of 10. And that there's not enough sort of this is this is how you just get this one one. Mm. That there's too much of you know if we'd have hit the heights if those lads hit the heights then we probably win the game four two. If those lads have have half an hour, 
either side of half time after going 2 0 down, where they absolutely hit the height and they all start playing. Then before you know where they are, Burnley can't live with you. And you know, it's it, whatever it is that works works. Mm. Great, it's it's all done. But there's not enough for me of yeah. But what are we going to do if we're a bit rubbish? And that's not least because it's 38 games, and at some point you're going to be a bit rubbish. At some points, a couple of heads are going to fall off. And this is where, when there is leadership talk, this is where I do actually, the last time this came up in earnest was Watford away. And I felt sorry for the players that day, and that they were set up to be soft centered. I felt that game, you know, Lucas was effectively playing centre mid on his own as lads were moving all over the place. And then everyone's saying, oh, but we look just so weak in the middle. And I think that there's got to be a. And maybe there isn't. Maybe we, we just acknowledge that this is the sort of thing that is going to happen occasionally because, like Rodgers. Klopp's the sort of manager who is not going to give them a safety net, who's going to say you've got to play your football, whereas Hodgson is all safety net. Mm. Julia is a safety net that's half the size of Hodgson's, but he says a safety net is half the size of Julia's. But fundamentally, you end up, you're left with, with, with Rodgers and Klopp, arguably, who might be saying, no safety net, lads, you just all play your game, you all go. But then the, what did for Rodgers eventually and what, what, what will undermine Klopp in this is that Burnley can just blam two past you you don't get a minute's rest these games this is the way in which they go yeah and I just don't think we've got time to watch players learn and Gibbo you, you've always said I don't want to watch certain players mm. sort of develop at Liverpool and I think you know one of the things that, that um, Rodgers got castigated for was, was uh, square, square pegs in, in round holes and one of the things that Klopp brought in last season you got a sense that he was playing players in the right position he was therefore at certain parts of the season getting more out of a squad that a lot of people had heavily criticised and you know obviously the manifestation of that was getting us to, to two cup finals and, and some really good league performances in, in, in isolation um, whereas Sati for me was sort of repetition of old mistakes in in terms of having too many players playing not necessarily in the best position. What one interesting thing though is that you know if we are talking about a plan B, I mean, can Liverpool go into a game against Burnley and say, well, we know what we know the way you you, you want to play. You're going to put ten men uh, behind the ball. Can we set up differently? Can we play Lucas Slaver and say, well, actually, we're going to be as gnarly. As, as you are and we're, we're, you know it's going to be a terrible game but we're going to win this game from a, from a corner from a centre half nodding one on, in, on, on 82 a really sort of ugly get it done sort of victory manager's not going to do that well He's not going to do that. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I suggest that he sort of needs to, to learn to, to do that on occasion. Not as Liverpool's sort of go-to style of play. I don't think anyone wants that. But it, it was quite interesting, really, what he said about uh, when he was questioned about the potential for us to bring in another, another midfielder. I think he said this either today or yesterday. And uh, he was mentioned, somebody in the, in the press talked about a combative midfielder. And he sort of laughed and says, well, how can you say we need to bring in a combative uh, midfielder when we've got Lu- Lucas Lever? And I think, again... You know, I mean, I'm a great fan of Lucas, and I don't think he's done by any means now that he's he's still here. But I think a lot of our fans would have massive take massive issue with the idea that we're we're gonna if we are gonna field a defensive mid, a real proper out and out stopper in midfield this season, then it's going to be Lucas Lever, and that we should, you know some people would have, will say we should have upgraded on Lucas two seasons ago, three seasons ago even. So that was a, that for me. That was a really interesting um, thing that he said at the press conference. I think he's been undone a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest there, and again, it'll just oh look, Andy's bashing him again. I don't think this side's got a nil nil in it. Um, I don't think it's got a nil nil, and I think if our forwards aren't strike or our midfield, our forward attacking unit, say the the attacking five, aren't functioning, I think we're going to be in big trouble. And it's not even necessarily the goalkeeper's fault. I think it's a mental thing with them. Um, and we're back in the th- I, every shot that we 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 seem to have seems to end up in a goal. And I'm not having it that that isn't in the, in the back four or the defensive. Well, you can't and you can't argue with that as a fact. No, that, no, there is. Yeah, every you get that horrible gut wrenching feeling, and it's not new. This is going back all through last season, and it can't not infect the the mentality of the players on the pitch. If if the foot, if we're struggling to create things, forget about Burnley for a minute. It, it it's become a feature of our play, and they get nervous, and we create our own. Pro- How many times have we dug ourselves into a hole? Because of could because of this attitude, and I feel a little bit. I think the manager got it wrong against Burnley, but I feel sorry for him in so much as that he's bought in two of his two of his big signings this summer, still get to start a first team game, and when you bring in two parts of it, if you're changing forty percent of your defensive unit, mentally you can refresh the people around that as well, because you're bringing in these two new lads, and we're going to do it a different way. It's hard to do that. When you, I mean, Clavin's come in and he's done okay, but it, it matters was builders, the big centre half replacement, 
the goalkeepers come in. I mean, we all seen in pre-season how far how, how much further Caddy's starting position was. To me, like, and I'm not digging out Mingle. I mean, he might have done better with the first. It's just, I think the, the manager may have thought, well, we get these two in and we can refresh everyone's thinking around it and try and reset that mentality. And uh, he's been undone by by injury to, to both of them. And I think unless we can get that right, it, it, it it's going to be a massive deal. And with all the training in the world, it's going to take a lot to, to, to shake this mental problem that we've got. I think one thing I've picked up as well in the first two games, it's done my bloody head in, is Lovren's um, gone into this habit of putting the, putting his arms behind his back. And, you know, you, you, you saw this as a theme with defenders last season. Moreno did it from time to time. They don't want to, do, don't want to get, give away a handball and a penalty. But if, you, if you're going into challenges where you're trying to get a block off, you're unbalanced. Yeah. You know, cut your arms off and you'd be, you know, be pretty wobbly. You'd be more wobbly than, than I am normally. Mm. Um, and it, it's, it, the, the, this, that, to me, I just, I just think it's absolutely insane. Now, I don't know where he's developed this from. The manager's certainly not telling him to, to unbalance himself. The, the, there's no two ways about that. But at the same time, someone needs to be correcting him on that because it's just mad. You know, and he did it last week, um, which ultimately led him deflecting the ball past Mignolet. You may say that's harsh and that didn't affect it, but for me, if you're off, if you're off balance, you're likely to, to get a nick on a ball. And there was certainly one of the two goals on on Saturday as well, where again he's shaping with with his arms behind his back to get a block in. He but he's getting back on it, mate. He's, 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 he's getting no, he's getting nowhere near, nowhere near the ball. Mm. I mean, you, when you think back to the the, the, the Halcyon days of Carragher and his ability to to get in get in the way of the ball when it's shot, and it was only, you thought it was uncanny, and occasionally you thought it was quite lucky, but there was there's an art to it, and it, it's but it's an art that you need you, you need your bloody arms, and you know, yeah. okay, occasionally you you will give away a free kick or, or, or a penalty for handball, but that's you know that's the nature of the beast. So and they don't give them that often either. No, because, it, because, because it's, it's, co- it's a couple of yards away. They yeah. say no, couldn't get his arm. I just don't understand that at all. Try and make a slide tackle without your arms. Yeah, your momentum you can't, comes can from you? your slide. A lot of your momentum in your forward trajectory comes from you. Yeah, and it, you're it, up, it's, you're, in a similar, it's just, like in a similar vein. Now. In a similar vein, I feel like having to go now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should go to the park and try. In a similar vein, you know, players get get sort of some sympathy for 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 an elbow in the face. We say because you need you need the leverage of your arms to to get a jump in. And it, it, you know, it's like an occupational hazard in a way. But to me, I, as I say, I just think it's, I just think it's mad that. And you need to tell him. <laughs> stop doing it, Dejan. If you if you if you listen, Dejan, uh, Mike never wants you to stop it now. Um, in fact, you know what happens when you when you end up with your arms behind your back. You end up like fucking Albi Moreno with his two with his two footed. They say that jokingly, but you look at the way the lad tackles. He tackles the way he tackles is mad. Hmm. Anyway, um, normally we do a front to back, but everyone was concerningly poor. Uh, I think we've mentioned Lalana, who I think is probably the only one who gets away with it in dispatches um, in terms of saying he was all right for 25 minutes. Mentioned how poorly both Coutinho and Firmino started, uh, how poorly a couple of the players, uh, including Henderson, became as the game wore on. Um, Klein has also had a little bit of a little bit of grief uh, as, as this has gone uh, gone along itself. The one the one thing that concerned me. Uh, Go, Mike. I don't know if I go John first on this. The one thing that concerned me was was firstly not just how poor they were first half, but that they got poorer coming out second. Yeah. And that every sub made us worse, which was quite some achievement. Mm. Uh, that every sub managed to make us worse was, I thought, just just terrifying, really. And it it did point to just that that, that the the speed with which the collective belief had, had dissipated out of everybody. You know, there's, there's, there was a, there was a horrendous patch which I'll come on to. And maybe Mike never made a read. Does the same bloody stupid thing twice right in front of us, and you're like, you've done it once. Why are you doing it again? Yeah. And the, but it just seemed like you know. But again, back to this thing that would just there's no. There's no digging each other out. There's no. Yeah. There's no how, how to have a decent five. There's no. There's no. This is what we do when we're, when we're playing poorly. And again, I think that comes as much from the way in which the setup as it does from what they're doing. But it's it is terrifying to watch every sub make you worse. Yeah, I think that was a real surprise to me because I think I think a couple of the subs seemed to kind of make sense, and I thought of would have more of an impact. I don't know whether the they're looking around for each other for inspiration and no one quite necessarily wants to be the one to, to sort it and I think that's a that's that's the age profile of the, of the squad I think you know if you know the, the, we got the big goal just before half time last week uh, the, the Coutinho one and you know, he seems like he's, he's at least willing to dig us out even if he hasn't necessarily got the best, best tactics all the time for doing it but 
kind of apart from him, really, you feel like they're, they're, they're looking around for inspiration. Like, well, who's the guy who's going to grab this from the from the with this grab this game by the scuff of the neck, and and who's the guy who's going to lead, and then, and then we'll all kind of follow him. And 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 that player doesn't seem to be at Liverpool at the moment, which is kind of symbolised by the fact that the, the, the Jordan Henderson's captain. Um, you know they're all kind of looking around each other, and so so I think Origi comes on, and he, he doesn't necessarily want to be the, the big savior at the moment. You know, yeah, he wants to be a goal scorer, and he wants to be the lad that gets on the end of stuff, but he doesn't necessarily be the be the one who's who's going to go. Come on, this is this is how we how we do it, really. You know, he's just he's a young kid who's done you know half a season really, and so you know maybe that's asking too much for him. And but you can make you can make individual concessions for all the players and say, oh, maybe we're asking too much for him by blah 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 blah. Well, well, there needs to be someone, and and that's kind of what worries me is that you know we've got this you know the, the policy in terms of investments and there's this kind of lost generation if you like of, of there's no one aged 27 to 29 and, and there's none of those guys I mean Clavin probably is but you know you don't want to be you know putting it on him as, as Mike's is a four million pound defender and so you know there just seems to be a, a lack of Leadership, or, or I mean, I don't know whether leadership is, is the right word. And you don't want to say they don't care because they do. And it's not like a, it's not, it's not an effort thing. It's just a kind of, it's a drive thing. It's okay. Well, this is what we do in this situation, and and, and someone's making, it's decision making. I mean, the manager talks about yeah. decision making afterwards. It's the idea that someone makes some decisions for you. But I think what, what I thought killed me watching it was, you know, you look at where you look at. No one's trying. My my worry with it is that I, is I sort of disagree with you, and where I disagree with it is I think they're all trying to sort it. And what I mean by that is I think that you know it's for instance things like the Coutinho shot. It's things like suddenly Sturridge is charging around doing a little bit of this. My, my issue is more not that they're all showing leadership because I don't think that is leadership. I yeah. think that I and it's back to something that Sean sometimes says, which is that there's a difference between leadership, i.e. Graham Souness running around charging into people, and someone like Steve Finnan who just wins your games of football by getting on with his job. And my worry is I'm watching them and they're all stood next to each other. The amount of times Henderson's mm. got the ball and he's looking at someone and he's you could almost see him towards the end of the game. And that was where I did begin to feel a little sorry for Henderson. And even though he was doing me head in the first part of the second half was he was like get away from me well, will you just go into space and then he's just oh alright well, I'll just knock it off then five more yards and that was my thing John was I think that they're all going you know how many times does Henderson, Henderson get on the ball about a billion times Coutinho's on the ball a billion times Lallana keeps getting on the ball but not, they're all getting the ball they're not hiding mm. but my thing is that they're not they're all all the heads have gone the heads have fallen off and leadership is someone who's able to say lads you just do your fucking job you just do your job over there you do yours there you do yours there and now we get moving and I think that the problem is they're all going no 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 I'll sort this I'll sort this and that's it, my it's Beckham Isis that you know that's that, was, that was Beckham for England for about for about five years he wanted to do wanted to do everything it's at, at the cost of every, everyone else on the pitch well, and even, even Stephen Gerrard might have been guilty of that, of that at that's times Steve, as well yeah, and you yeah. know no criticism but, but, but you know it's, it's the feeling the need to do that isn't it I, I think in terms of this, this um, collective failing if you like it's it's a collective lack of personality in a way I mean and in terms of the decision making if you would just boil it down to the, sh- the shots that we had on, on Saturday we seem to shoot when we shouldn't and not when we should that and that's that to me is is the the, the, the sort of the, the whole the, the, a summary of bad decision making really. Um, you know, if you're hitting from thirty yards, but well, then you're passing up the, ch- the chance to to shoot from twelve. Arigi being the obvious example there because he had two opportunities to cut in and shoot and went on the outside instead and tried to cross. Um, and I think there was and it wasn't just him, but there were, you know there were other examples of that. Of that. Um, they looked to me like they didn't rate each other. Yeah, and I think and that's the thing that I think that's what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah. Johnny looked to me like a gang of lads who don't rate each other. They're all looking at each other, thinking, "I could do the thing you're doing currently a bit better." Coutinho's yeah. looking at v- v- and thinking, "I could probably be doing your bit a bit better." So when you pick the ball, I'm going to come and stand five yards away from you. You've got Sturridge looking at Firmino, thinking, "I can do your bit there up front and send set, set, centre forward a bit better than you." You, you know, you've probably got Henderson who's probably looking at both Lallana and Vernaldum, thinking, "I can probably do that bit a little bit better than you." But they're looking at him, thinking, "Christ, lad, how many touches do you need before you spray this?" <laughs> Milner, Milner himself is, is labouring at left back. They're looking at Milner going, well, we don't really fancy you in the middle of third of the pitch. They're all looking at each other going after, and it's, it's from about twenty, and it was what drove me mad. They're all looking at each other going, I don't think you're as good as as uh, as you should mm. think you are, or as I should think you are. And if that if that persists, and if that can't be dealt with, then we're going to be so easy to frustrate on the road because all you've got to do is just stand us up and have them all look at each other and go, well, you know what, lads, I don't I don't rate you very much. Whereas the amount of trust and faith that they had in each other in the in, in the twenty minutes spell where they exploded onto Arsenal it was lads making blind passes and, and runs off the back of people and all sorts of stuff and that has just completely gone but that's 
but that suggests that they, I don't know, there's, they must have some faith in each other. And I, I, I completely understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to kind of figure out the, the psychology of this football team, and it's a very difficult thing to do. I when think they, it is really, when, really when, hard. When, 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 they, when they're kind of so mad, so they, they must have something. I just worry that they're so from foot, and they're so, oh, when it's going great, aren't we, boss? And the kind of worst Liverpool team I've known for that, really, who haven't been able to just kind of dig something out of somewhere, or haven't been able to look all right when they when they haven't been great. You know, when they, haven't, they don't look like a team who's, you know what I mean? They Andy don't look they interested in scruffy yeah. wins, do yeah, they? That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. When, Andy when says, was the last scruffy goal? On, yeah, Andy says they haven't got a nil nil on them. I wonder, you know, have they got a have they got a two nil where nothing really happens? Mm. You know, where you go to game of football and go, well, we weren't great today, but we, we put a couple well, in. Th- this is what and, I mean about the you pl- can't play brilliant every week. You can't do that. I mean, you can't even play brilliant for ninety really. And yeah. it's okay. Well, what do we do when when it's not kind of happening, or what do we do when? And that's when you rely on a system, I think, and that's when you rely on just kind of a bit of, a bit of know how. And they don't seem to have that at the moment. It's it's only that bit where they get to all be brilliant. Yeah, I mean, and he, as a as a fan going into Saturday, I was thinking. To yourself, win this three nil, four nil. Yeah. Now that's that's a mad mentality. You, you know, you don't don't often win three nil, four four nil away from home. But there I was Saturday morning, think we'll, we'll win this easy. And I think that there must be an element of that in the players' minds, and they've got to snap out of that. And this is me harking back to the humble thing again. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going to Burnley, not playing particularly well, but winning one nil. And you know, I think also there's there's, there's other there's, there's there's sort of other personality issues with with, with the team where. Just generally speaking, they, 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 in, them, in their mentality, they want to win in a really expressive way. And there was the joy of the Arsenal performance in that 20 minutes there. You know, you, you're not going to do that um, more than three when or four times a season. When Sorry. did we last score a tap in? Not a header. When yeah. did we last score well, a tap in? I've just been having a look. When did we last actually score a tap in? I think I don't believe. Uh, that the, uh, remember the, the Bournemouth Watford's game last year, towards the end of last season. It's, I think it's. I think it was about to say. I think it's for me. You know, with Bournemouth. Yeah. That's, that's the one I've gone back to. And, there. And Sturridge gets a routine sort of flicked header in that game as well. Uh, from a set piece. Yeah. But, but I mean, there's a couple of headers in there. Ben Teke scores a late header against Chelsea. But there's not. And you, and you go back through. There's not a ton of tap ins in this Liverpool side. Mm. There's a lot of really well worked team goals. But there's not a ton of. Oh well, you know, Andy. The, the, the pressure came to bear. And it was too much for them, and at some point something was going to give or something like that. That's what there's not been, at least domestically. You know, there's not been that moment of oh well, and we just got a scruffy one, or someone followed up the keeper when it bounced back off them, and we 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 benefited from a bit of bad goalkeeping. There's not there's not much scruffiness, is there in them? No, but I think that's the way we attack. We're all you know, when when we're playing well, it's all kind of cut and thrust, and there isn't that sustained pressure. The, the, the type of goal that United have scored a few of already this, this season. You know, where, where, they, where they're not touching the sky, but no, they're putting the ball in the back of the net. No, they, they just score in regulation six out of the, six out out of seven goals. You know, it kind of reflects on that the performance were either were either not very good or we look mind blowing, and maybe that strangely is reflected in the in the goals we score. I mean, saying that a couple of times last season we looked if we wanted to, we could have done Everton. We played particularly well. We looked like we could have walked it in. There was periods against Arsenal where I thought, you know, cutting these to ribbons. I had. Had Arsenal had scored the second, the minute or two after Mane, I th- I th- that could have turned into an exhibition game. But where you're right is we're not scoring the first. The first goal is never a, a, a tap in or mm. you know a, a scruffy sliding across the deck and just getting a toe end on it. There's very little of that. I agree, and uh, but I think it's just partly the way the, we, we set up. There's, it's important as we're coming to sort of the end of this because you can only do it for so long. Uh, Steve Peters once said that you can only really rant and rave about something for eight minutes. Um, I think we're, we're well past that. <laughs> um, but there's, um, I think there's, there's ranting and raving, isn't there? You know, yeah. people listening to this might think we're, you know, we're, we're being hypercritical and we're sort of laying into players individually and as a collective. But where it comes from, it's the sheer disappointment. Because I think everyone went into to, to Saturday just dead enthusiastic, really looking forward to seeing Liverpool put on, yeah. put on another show. Maybe we were wrong to expect that. Maybe we would have been better. Uh, but you feel Liverpool accepted, expected that. But that's that's absolutely. the kicker. And, and you know, it's all right for us as fans to go into games with that mentality. But as professional footballers, you can't afford you can't afford to assume that you're going to put on a show. You've got to be. You've, and one of the things that really worried me, really, really worried me about about Saturday in the 20, last 25 minutes is that once that collective head gone situation to come into play I didn't think Liverpool were putting in 100% I really didn't and I think there was, there was a moment where Henderson um, gave it like a really really sort of obvious five yard ball and Klopp called him over to the side and appeared to have a go at him and say you, you're not at it it was just not long after he'd been booked and I thought generally speaking I think mentally 
uh, as much as phys- physically Liverpool gave up on that game with at least half an hour to go. But Mike, we 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 but it's, again, and I, I keep repeating and banging, but I really think it's a massive thing. They're sh- consistently shooting ourselves in the foot, and in this instance, ninety seconds into a fucking game. Yeah, you know, and it, if you talk about players, will always make, like, make mistakes. The, 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 though, it, it like and no, mass- ma- it, no manager can can eradicate silly it, errors. No, from exactly. Time to it time. felt like a bubble burst, and yeah. it was like that 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 deflation after the, the the two minutes and the manner of the goal as well. And, and it's going back to this again. Every shot on target seems to end up in the back of the fucking net. Okay, uh, it is the second game, uh, and it is important. It's the second game, you just said, you said before, Mike, the idea that there's that there's uh, you know if, if it's going to happen, it happens now, and that's no bad thing. But John, I'll go to you first on this. I, but I think the manager's going to be an idealist, no matter what, and I think that yeah. that's that's. I, I, I think this is something we're going to have to get used to, whether we like it or not. I mean, yeah. we've had the preseason now and all that sort of stuff. But he's Liverpool manager. He's going to remain Liverpool manager, and you know he's not going anywhere anytime soon. And by anytime soon, I mean for two seasons, and that's something that I'm right behind. Uh, you know, for all the, for all the frustrations of Saturday, that should not be on anyone's agenda at all. But this is what he's going to do. He's going. To, he's got his way of playing. He's got his football that he wants them to play, and he's he, he's got the way he's going to be in the transfer market. He's got the way in which he's going to approach every aspect of what he's doing with the football club. He's going to be an idealist, and the minute he's not an idealist, he probably should should go. If you know, that's sort of what I'm driving at. He's got yeah. to be his own man. He's got yeah, to remain his own man. Yeah, it's the thing about of, of when he when he got his head all muddled and tried to be something he wasn't. That, that, then that's when he was kind of really in trouble for in terms of a Liverpool manager. He's he's he knows how to he knows how to develop footballers, and he's got faith in that, and he's have he's got a right to have faith in that because he's done it before, and and. So he's so he's he's obviously looking at certain players, and I can say, well, I don't think Jordan Henderson's a defensive midfielder because I've I've seen this, this, and this, and then and then he's thinking, well, he's got this quality, he's got this quality, so there's no reason why he can't play the position because you know he's he he, he can do the things that I that I want him to do there, and so there's that kind of conflict, if you like, and and his important opinion is obviously much more important than mine, and so so I think I think there might be a little bit more time to be frustrated. As, as a Liverpool fan than, than what we were hoping for you know we've talked a lot about when well, he had the time to look at them last, se- last year and he had, the, he had the pre-season I just wonder about his reluctance to, to, to bring in players now just because I think he you know he famously wanted them done quite early and so I, I don't know whether he would just wants to kind of throw someone in now and he hasn't been able to work with but I just, I just it just feels to me that it sort of needs it and if you have a bad result at spares and then, and then the transfer window comes and goes and it's as Mike says a positive net spend then then people will start asking questions, and and it's and it's difficult to. It's difficult for for any football club, and I think for any manager, even though even ones who's, who's as positive as Jurgen Klopp, if if the, if the fans are going, well, I'm going, what's going on here? You know, they go, you know, we've talked about the atmosphere going into the Leicester home game, and how and how we were hoping it would be, you know, unbeaten, and, and and everyone really looking forward to seeing these Reds. Well, if it goes in, you know, where where people go, well, I'm going, why haven't we spent this money, and why why are FSG making money for, from this? Are we are we paying for the stand like Arsenal, where sort of thing, you know, these these things, or why aren't they selling to China? You know, and and if that if that, if that atmosphere kind of goes around the football club that's kind of everything against what what Klopp's trying to do you know he spoke to us in the summer about everyone feeling part of it and everyone, and, and the, the impact that a, that a supporter base can have and, and if, if we all turn up to Leicester a bit fed up then it's really really hard for Jürgen Klopp or any manager to kind of do what he wants to do Yeah I'm, I'm right behind what Gibbo said there and, and you know I'm I'm all for Klopp's idealism, and the, the, you know we want to we want to win the league in a certain way. We ultimately we want to win the league, don't we? And you know if we, if we can do it by developing players and buying young players and not by, buying Paul Pogba for eighty seven million, then you know every Liverpool fan is behind that. And you know if he is an idealistic manager, then I'm I'm, I'm right with him on that message. And you know we all want to be that, but I think also we've got to accept a dose of realism as well. And the realism for me now is to accept that that Saturday revealed that we've, we've still got some key and obvious weaknesses that can be addressed between now and August the 31st. And I don't, I don't care really about whether you know he hasn't, he's got time to get a pre-season into a player that he hasn't uh, you know been at the watch over. Ultimately, I think we, we've seen in the two games so far that there are a couple of critical weaknesses that could be easily addressed by us spending some go of our him, money. Go to you in a minute, Andy. I'm going to go back to Mike on this though first. I'm going to be a bit mean to him, but the manager's sitting here now and he's saying he's saying what he said at his press conference last week when he said, you know, he says if the players show commitment to us, we show commitment to the players. He says this is he's building an ethos, he's building an idea of this is what he wants his fo- his football club to be. This is what he wanted to be about. That he's prepared. He doesn't want to hang any of his lads who are showing commitment to him out to dry. And this is 
and his view is that if we had another, you know, it, it appears to be that, you know, if you tell me now that one comes in, then I'm telling you that one's going out. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's, he seems pretty committed to that. And so what would you say to him if he was saying that to you? If he was saying, Mike, you know what, these are my lads, I've, I've, I'm committed to well, these lads, we're going to sort at these lads, and if we don't, we look at it again much further well, down I, the line. I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to get into an argument with the egg and Klopp across the table now. Because you know, fucking it, well, you, you know, we're roughly the same age, by the way. Okay. And that, that, um, that's a side He's point. But, a but big what advantage a, in reach. What, well, he certainly <laughs> has, yeah. He could, certainly, he could hit me across the table without getting up. Um, <laughs> but what I would... It, Counselling that that question, I I would say, well, you know, if I'm being mean back to him, and I don't, I have no reason to be, is that he doesn't want to to, to, to hang his lads out to dry. But he defended uh, Albi Moreno in the week and then didn't pick him. Now, so th- there's an aspect of you being hung out to dry there, um, and he and he picked him in a game, he or he didn't pick him in a game where we wouldn't expect to have come under that much pressure down the flanks. And if there was an opportunity for some kind of rehabilitation of Moreno, and I think he's as, as, as daft as a brush, like most Liverpool fans as well, then Burnley away, where you're going to do most of the attacking, as we did, um, was a possible opportunity to do that. So that, that would be my answer to your question. But I think, as I say, just, 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 just being realistic about, about the personnel that we've got, about the money that we've spent, about the, the apparent key weaknesses that, we, that we, we've got in the, in the first eleven. And I think it is the first eleven. And I take Andy's point as well about two of his key players haven't even featured yet, and that's fine. And that's why no one's going overboard after two games. But I still think the surgery that Liverpool can make that can make the first eleven better. I don't think he'll talk about a solution until a solution is found. In so much that I think I I, I think they'll they'll bring someone in. Um, I think he will as well. I don't, by the way. I don't think there's any point even considering talking about it or even hinting at it until you've actually found that solution because we've, we've been bitten on the arse too many times in the past where there's been speculation that hasn't been knocked back mm. and then the, 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 the incumbent in that position then feels under pressure you know he's very much about having the, making the players feel like they can do perform miracles where if you know that your manager's looking for someone else then that, how do you that, do that's that? entirely fair enough I'd say um, and also on that you know what and we've sat here and moaned about it Football's fucking crackers, isn't it? I mean, I don't think... I've I've, I've pitched Sutton tears now. If any of you's got any doubts about it, I want to call me fucking stupid, fine. As poor as we were, as poor as we were, we score before 73, 74 minutes. The minimum we get away with to draw. The minimum we get away with to draw, despite what's just gone before it. Yeah. Because momentum in football, and I believe Jurgen Klopp is all about a lot of, a, a yeah. lot of his big facets. That's a key word around Jurgen Klopp. He's a momentum manager, yeah. isn't he? Because you know, he's all emotion and, and personality, yeah. and so that, that's a, that's a natural yeah, byproduct and it, and it, it's, of that. It's forcing that momentum. United and the Ferguson, they, they, they were the kings at it. They refused to accept that things were going against them, and they just done the thing. But exactly, Neil, exactly what you were saying. The players just got on with the jobs. They didn't lose their heads, and they knew at some point if they just kept doing this thing and doing this thing and doing this thing, it'd all be fine. And then you're burning. The first one goes, and you're thinking, oh, for fuck's sake, and then it's them making the mistakes. It's them making the mistakes. It's only when it goes to... I always find it funny. Gary Neville, a lot of the time, said this. Phil Neville, Carragher. It always astounds me. Skulls when he's commentating. A team will be losing 2-0 on 67, 68 minutes. And the commentators never... It's always the ex-pros go, that's loads of time left. Loads of time left here. Yeah. There's loads of time left here. And these are fellas who play the game who know that games can swing literally on one incident. Literally one incident. You look at... Look at Arsenal last week before one up, absolutely smashing it, and then they score within two minutes. If Arsenal don't score within five minutes of us going our fourth, they don't score one. They don't score one, and that's two sides of things. It's not just because Arsenal was suddenly brilliant or we were suddenly shit. It's a combination of both. Yeah, absolutely. It's a mental combination yeah. on both sides, isn't it? Okay, so and at so, Arsenal, so I, so when my, the fourth so one went in. The question. Sorry. Sorry. No, go man. ahead. Seventy-four minutes. Liverpool make it two-one. What's the final score? Probably two all, I reckon. Um, if not, two all. It, 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 and just 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 to sort of reinforce your point there, Andy. When I had Arsenal last week, when the fourth one went in, I turned to Chris McGuire and said, "This could end up nine one." And about thirty seconds later, he said to me, "This is going to be four four, isn't it?" And you can't have you can't have a great. I mean, okay, probably wouldn't have been nine one, but could have been six one. Quite easy because of that mental shift. And you know, 
as you say, going back to your original statement, football is crackers, and we saw, you know we saw that at the weekend. We've got to embrace it, got to make it work for you. Okay, huge thank you, John Gibbons, Mike Heat, Mike Mike Heaton, Mike <laughs> Nevin. Uh, That's Mike what Nevin happens when we start agreeing. And Mike, with each other. <laughs> Mike Heaton, uh, uh, Mike's lad <laughs> um, over there. Jürgen Klopp has said today. He said development doesn't always go one hundred percent the way you want. Sometimes you have to learn to take the knocks. Sometimes you have to take the knocks and learn from it. Burton Tuesday, Spurs Saturday. Let's go Reds. Let's let's learn. <laughs> 